again. Hi, I'm James Hollywood Machikari. Join me Monday through Friday for Motorcycle Mayhem Morning Show on YouTube Live, Facebook, and all major podcasting platforms where we talk about all the major biker news going on in the scene. Rock on! And how you guys doing? Welcome to Motorcycle Madhouse Modern Mayhem, baby. Like I said at the intro of the podcast over on Spotify, iTunes, and the rest, we're going to have some Johnny Cash, baby. Also, we're going to have some freaking Metallica and Motley Crue. Yes, go over to these platforms. You can hear an extended show that you don't get over on YouTube and Facebook. We got about a 15-minute more uh, longer segment over there man listen to us at work listen to some cool ass music baby also if you want to donate you can by cash app dollar sign motorcycle madhouse paypal at topfuelabd at gmail.com and find me youtube at super chat man all my super chatters in there baby love that youtube chat room man love to uh say thanks for all the uh support you've been giving the show since all these new rules have popped off on these platforms throttling us down but hey Still kicking ass over on the radio stations, man. Uh, today, I want in my monologue, everybody knows I do my monologue, and then we do the news. Uh, but all the time, and you guys see it too as well, the media are calling clubs gangs because they have a few bad apples that are going out there causing trouble. So today I figured in our biker news that I'll give you some national and local news on what a gang really is. And, you know, it kind of pees me off when they call a, a club a gang, but that's because, you know, they're ignorant. You know, they buy into what a lot of law enforcement say. And as you know, we do a lot with the wall of shame. We show the exact uh, crimes that are committed by some club members, cops do the same thing. So it's kind of a washout if you ask me. But gangs, let's get to them. Street gangs, I know a lot about them. I've been uh, around them since I was eight years old or something like that. Uh, when you are trying to take the position that clubs are gangs, you are totally, absolutely, 100% wrong. You're wrong. You do not know what a street gang is at that point. You're ignorant. You're listening to the media. You don't know how to do research. You don't know the difference between your ass and your pecker. They're two totally different organizations. Motorcycle clubs, you got your brotherhood. And again, I'm not going to sit there and try to push daisies up your ass and talk about how clubs are just the best people on earth. We know that not to be true. There's some individuals in there that aren't. They do not follow the bylaws. They get and they bring all this pressure on the clubs that isn't necessary. Clubs go by brotherhood. And my position is if you believe in brotherhood, then why are you going to bring all these problems onto your club? There are 1% of clubs that are considered domestic terrorists by the DOJ. Because the actions of a few. And that's sad stuff, man. Sad state of affairs when that happens. There's a lot of, like I always say, there's a lot of hard-working freaking guys in clubs. I'd have to say almost 99.999999% of club members are hard-working people. They go to work every day, pay their bills just like you and I. They're not out there slinging dope. They're not out there slinging guns. They're not doing any of that stuff. That's where you don't understand the gang life. You don't understand the streets and you're ignorant. Like I said, uh, we're going to be bringing up what a street gang really is. Street gangs are totally off the chart, man. If you would come up to me and say... Because let's just take an average here. Just an average 
of how many people are in a club. In a chapter, if you will. And in a one percenter club. Six to ten, maybe. That's the average. It could go up to um, as much as 20. Here's the problem with your argument if you're going out there claiming that clubs are street gangs. There's 20 people. Let's give it the top end of 20 people. You're going to tell me that if they're going out there on somebody else's turf, slinging uh, dope, slinging guns, not having any, <laughs> and I'm talking any allies within the streets, that them 20 peoples are going to take over a neighborhood. I'm asking, I'm being honest here. But if you go to the average, okay, let's go 6 to 10. You really think that all them people right now that are in that chapter are down? I'd have to disagree. Because when you start some stuff, and especially in Chicago, see, I don't know where you get your information media, but here in Chicago, the crews run the fucking streets, man. It ain't clubs that run anything. It's the crews. It's the street gangs. They're over here popping each other left and freaking right. Do you think that, uh, you know, the 6 to 20 guys in a chapter are down with some drive-by shootings, walking up to somebody, taking them out, willing to do the time, getting all gangster? I don't see it. I don't see it. I'm sorry to say, I don't see it. Clubs, if they're going to do something, they usually try to send a message. Okay, you know, talk about the wars. Let's talk about it. They hit one guy, well, then there's a, a retaliation, and then there's bad blood. No, you get into the street game, you're talking guys are getting popped off anytime they get seen. And it never ends until somebody wins. That's why you see a huge murder rate in Chicago, especially on the west and south sides, man. You got stuff going on in them freaking uh, on that section of Chicago that's been going on years. And we're not only talking uh, three or four people being put down. No, we're talking by the hundreds, thousands by now. It's some hardcore stuff, man. They, when you go by prison stuff, by prison rules, that's just like when you go in the joint. And I'm sure you'd get this from Big Herc or you'd get it from Wes Watson because they've been in the joints. It's a whole different ball game, man. I don't care if you are this one percenter or that one percenter. You go in that joint, it's totally different, man. It don't matter what the hell you were on the street. It goes by color. That's the way it is. So, getting back to this gang stuff and the club comparison, which, you know what? I wish the media and Leo would actually tell the truth about this. Because there's no reason for an MC to be designated a terrorist organization. None whatsoever. They're not at the... And, you know, a lot of people are going to say, well, why are you saying that? Well, they're not at the level of, say, freaking uh, a major Chicago gang. They're not. They're not at the level of a California street gang. Especially Latino ones out there in Cali. <laughs> uh-uh. New York. The Kings. Oh, man. The Kings have to have thousands upon thousands of freaking members. Same goes out in uh, Cali. Sometimes you actually see clubs if you got guys out there doing some stuff working with the gangs. Because that's who has the power. That's who has all the, the connections, if you will. And I don't know uh, what you guys learned about the streets, but it's all about connections, power, and money, baby. It ain't about sitting at a table, voting for something. No. It's what the boss says at the top of that system, man, at the gang system. So I just find it unbelievable that they continue to push this argument on clubs. They just continue to do it. But there has to be some pushback. You got to give 
opposing views to this type of stuff. Uh, uh, argument. You got to give an argument to what they're saying. You oppose it and try to find a happy medium. But it is a sad state of affairs when a couple people make a whole club look bad. Now, another question a lot of time comes up. Well, what do you call it when clubs are claiming territory or they're fighting another one and this and that and this and that? <laughs> I call it tradition. That's the way it's always been. Especially when clubs went nationwide or worldwide. It just, uh, that's about where you're at. It's not like they're trying to control a neighborhood. Because I guarantee you, the only one that controls states is the syndicate, man. Or these other ones. You got friggin' uh, the Chinese, Japanese, you got Russians. Those are the ones that control everything. Name me a club that has absolute power. Who do they got on their payroll? Who's the judges? Who's the politicians? You're never going to be able to name that. You know why? Because that's not their structure. Their structure is set up for brotherhood. Not all the other nonsense. Just saying, man. Uh, you know, let me know what you guys think, really. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, for those over on uh, Spotify and all the radio uh, platforms, we're going to be playing some freaking Johnny Cash, baby. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at HarleyLiberty.com. Founded in 2012, Insane Throttle Biker News has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene. Go over now and bookmark HarleyLiberty.com. Rock on! Hi, this is China Doll from Hollywood and China Doll Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. And you got to love yourself some Johnny Cash, man. You guys got to get over there if you're on YouTube, man. Uh, download you an episode and get you some good showing going on. Stuff that you're not able to uh, hear on YouTube and stuff because of that copyright. Thank God Spotify opened the books, as I say, man. It's getting freaking uh, crazy over there. Also, there's a different segment that I don't cover over here. Uh, yeah, go over there and take a look at it. Anyway, let's go to Valley Central and let's uh, get behind my argument that clubs are not gangs. Here's some real gangs for you. DEA takes down 29 El Paso gang members linked. To a violent Mexican drug cartel. Wonder if that's the Templars they're talking about down there. Arrest, drugs, cash, and gun seizures are part of a nationwide uh, initiative to reduce drug related violence. Well, you know what I say? Make drugs legal, you won't have any damn uh, violence going on now, will you? You think the government would have learned from Al Capone and his buddies? Uh, Julian. Uh, 29 people have been arrested in recent weeks in the El Paso area as part of a DEA-led uh, initiative targeting violent drug gangs. Project Safeguard also netted the seizure of 39 firearms, $467,536 in cash, and a half of a ton of controlled substances here in the past two months. Now they got a hold of that cash. Now they also got a, a half a ton of do, uh, you know stuff going on over there that they caught. A half of a ton. <laughs> Holy shit. Uh, according to the El Paso Field Division of the Drug Enforcement Administration, the local arrest and seizures are part of a nationwide push to reduce violent crime associated with drug trafficking activity. Quote, there is no doubt that drug trafficking and violent crime are linked. Well, no, you know, it takes a scientist to know that. Said Kyle Williamson, special agent in charge of the DEA's El Paso field office. Quote, 
We've seen firsthand how Mexican cartels and local street gangs have created a dangerous alliance, a dangerous alliance to distribute some of the deadliest drugs on the planet to every corner of our nation. Again, we've seen firsthand how Mexican cartels and local street gangs have con uh, created a dangerous alliance. The initiative means to disrupt and dismantle major drug rings, which would never happen. Work with other agencies to bring about firearm charges and capture fugitive traffickers. <laughs> oh, man. Uh, let's see here. They include uh, Barrio Azteca, Serenos, Gangster Disciples, Chuca Tango, Bloods and Crips, another group, West Texas Tango Gang, has influence in El Paso and Midland counties. Of those, Barrio Azteca, also known as Los Aztecas, have strong, long-standing ties to our uh, Juarez base, uh, La Lina, one of the Mexico's uh, most violent drug cartels. See, I thought it was the Templars down there, but it's La Lina. Uh, and while Juarez hovers around 1,400, 1,400 murders so far this year, including killings that involve decapitation, dismemberment, and incineration. When's the last time you heard a club do that stuff? El Paso just crossed, uh, just got uh, across the Rio Grande, has been spared most of that violence. Local DEA officials attribute that to strong partnership and intelligent works of the federal, state, and local law enforcement agencies to identify potential threats and preempt them. Also, El Paso is more of a distribution center than a market for the retail sale of illicit drugs. El Paso is a distribution center. Most drugs go to the other areas of the country. The DEA said in an email to Border Report, quote, most drugs move out of the region, but there is drug use throughout the area. A wide range of individuals are involved in the sale of drugs, both gangs and non-related uh, individuals. The cartels in recent years have rushed to capitalize on America's opiate epidemic, which claims about 70,000 lives every year through the overdoses. These groups are still sending marijuana and cocaine ac across the border, but their fastest growing expert to the United States are now methamphetamine and fentanyl. You can't even bring, you know, blame all the meth uh, like the media does on clubs. It's coming from over the border, man. But incineration, decapitation, yeah, that's the cartels right there, baby. So how are you going to equate motorcycle clubs with that? Because that's what they're saying when they call it a motorcycle gang. That's what they're trying to push. I don't see no parallels whatsoever with that. Not whatsoever. Now let's go here to my hometown. Yes, my hometown. Chicago violence uh, uh, prompts calls for street gang truce on 28th anniversary and shooting death of a seven-year-old boy at Cabrini Green. Cabrini Green ain't there anymore. But it was a hard-ass place, man, let me tell you. Torreo's homemade. Uh, I hate commercials, so we can't go through that. Uh, in 1992, the fatal shooting of a seven-year-old near Northside Boy resulted in a Chicago street gang truce. Now, 28 years later, the family of Detrell uh, Davis is calling for another truce in hopes of stopping the violence in the city. And it's been pretty bad, man. Uh, if you ever are watching the news and see uh, <laughs> the weekend totals, as we call it here, man, uh, it's worse than uh, Afghanistan, Iraq, any of them places here in Chicago. That's why it's called Chirac. Davis was shot to death at Cabrini Green as he walked to school with his mother, a stray bullet fired by a gang member 
from the public housing high-rise led to a truth that lasted a few years. A few years. While the gang leader responsible, Anthony Garrett, was sentenced to 100 years in prison, Davis's mother said she suffers a life sentence of grief. I feel so sorry for her losing her kid that way. Well, I go through pain every day. It doesn't change. You just learn to deal with it. Freeman said she does not take some solace in knowing that her son's death brought about a truce among gangs to put down their guns and help keep children safe. That's one thing I can say about gangs. It used to be everybody was worried about the neighborhood keeping it safe, but it ain't like that anymore. The almighty dollar took over, man. Power and money took over. It really did, man. It used to be about the community helping each other, keeping the community safe. Uh, keeping the community safe because cops wouldn't come into it. Yeah, it's the way it used to be, man, but it ain't no more like that. Freeman said she does take some solace in knowing, okay, uh, Maurice Perkins with the Inner City Youth Foundation helped broker that truce. Quote, it hurt, and it hurt us all. We said we'd do something about it, and we did it. Despite skeptics, from some city leaders, the commitment uh, to nonviolence among gang leaders lasted for several years. Perkins said it proves that reducing gun violence is possible. However, with the recent spike in gun violence across the city, he's hoping to bring gang leaders to the table once again. Good luck with that because it's a whole different generation now. Everyone should be outraged with our babies falling like that. And you're damn right people should be freaking uh, outraged that babies falling left and freaking right. Can't even walk to freaking school because of this. If Davis lived, he would have been 38 years old today. His mother believes he would have had been a boxer like his grandfather. But instead, his mother is the one fighting for peace. Quote, that's one thing about my black men. They don't play about hurting babies. And they felt the responsibility of stepping up and stopping it. The buildings that once made up Cabrini Green are long gone, but the memorial of Dontrell Davis remains. His mother hopes the lesson of his death remain as well. And what's sad about that Cabrini Green project, it was replaced by a bunch of yuppie townhouses. Yeah, pretty bad. But here in these two stories, do you see what point I'm getting at? Clubs are not gangs. They're not. Yeah, you've heard me say, well, if you out there doing gang stuff, uh, what do you think people are going to call you? You can't do that, man. You got to rein them members in. Because the more that happens, the more you're going to be freaking associated with this kind of stuff. And I know clubs ain't like that, man. More of my final thoughts on that, uh... Also, that other segment I'm talking about will be right after my final thoughts. Uh, actually, it'll be right after we uh, play some Metallica. But uh, let's go to our next uh, story up here. Uh, that driver, yes, I told you I'd talk about this one, of uh, Massachusetts who awaits trial in the New Hampshire uh, crash that left seven motorcyclists dead, will not... I repeat, will not get a chance to argue for his release. The judge rules. <laughs> Best thing a judge has ever done. He denied the driver bid to be released while he awaits trial in connection with the crash that left seven motorcyclists dead. We actually covered a good story with the jarheads. Uh, a lot of them uh, were a part of this uh, who died. They actually... Uh, Gave a good deal for a Vietnam vet, man. That was so awesome on the last episode. Uh, the driver, and again, I do not freaking say his name. I will not. I refuse. Wanted a new bail hearing, and his lawyers were seeking his release under conditions. But a judge in New Hampshire denied the motion. This guy is a foreign national. Do you really believe he'd be sticking around? No, he'd be cutting off that electric bracelet and running. Because he's facing life right now. He remains held after he was indicted on seven counts of manslaughter, seven counts of negligent homicide, and several other charges in connection with the June 21st, 2019 
on Route 2 in Randolph, New Hampshire, that left seven members of the Jarheads Motorcycle Club dead. Sad state of affairs that was. But it was cool seeing the motorcycle community all come together. That I can tell you. Uh, lawyers for the driver also argued his Miranda rights, Miranda, I call him Miranda, rights were violated by investigators who questioned him after the deadly crash. The judge determined those rights were not violated, and they weren't. They weren't. They're grasping for straws right now. Prosecutors contend that the driver should remain in custody while awaiting trial. One of their arguments is that they are concerned he would flee the United States and head to Ukraine if he was released. I told you. I told you. They were afraid of that too, and I guarantee that's what would have happened. His defense lawyers wanted him released on personal reconnaissance. <laughs> are you kidding me? He killed seven people. And under several conditions to ensure he would be monitored. The lawyers contend a review of the crash conducted by the independent firm hired by the state had poked holes in the criminal case. No, it didn't. In court filings, our prosecutors listed numerous incidents showing history of drug use, impaired driving, and omissions by the driver about his daily use of drugs. Here's a guy who held a Class A CDL. That's scary shit right there. Prosecutors in New Hampshire case also noted uh, he's a Ukrainian national with status as a long-term permanent resident. There is a detainer from immigration officials in order to have him deported as well. Well, more upon, moreover, upon information and belief, the defendant has immediate family members currently living in Ukraine. Prosecutors wrote in previous court filings, he's a significant flight risk. And he uh, had ingested fentanyl and cocaine prior to the crash, and both drugs were found in his blood after the collision. So, there's something a good a judge freaking did, I can tell you that, man. That's good news. Because if he was released on electronic monitoring, he would have flew the coop. Would have left. Anyway, let's go to Corey Graff's Wall of Shame, shall we? Everybody's favorite. And the Wall of Shame, of course, is showing officers that, uh, you know, do bad stuff. Do bad stuff. Officers showed bikers uh, his gun after they caged him in. Now, I wouldn't call them bikers, but uh, police are reviewing whether a non-uniformed Akron officer in his personal vehicle broke department policy or the law when he brandished his holstered gun while boxed in by a group of 100 bikers running red lights through downtown. The incident happened as motorcycle enthusiasts. You see how they throw it off there? First it's bikers, now it's motorcycle enthusiasts. Yeah. Met at Chapel Hill Mall for a bit get together ride through the city the gathering drew riders from uh, across the region on an assortment of Harleys I doubt 125 CC Hondas you imagine a freaking uh, bagger or something riding with a 125 CC Honda Grom sport bikes and uh, high pitched on off road dirt bikes the riders did not request a police escort and they did not obey traffic laws their own videos capture them popping wheelies and stopping traffic to run red lights. It was just pretty much a community ride who recorded the event on this helmet mounted camera. The procession was heading all, let's see here, south on all the American, uh, all America bridge into downtown Akron. Uh, let's see here. Yep, there's the video. Ooh. Yeah, that's safe. Yeah, don't think so. Uh, in another video of the incident, a biker pops a wheelie they're talking about. Uh, but the whole thing was caught on video. Captain Dave Lofton, a spokesman for the Akron Police Department, said, The matter is being investigated by internal affairs. A sergeant saw the video on Facebook and initiated the review. Quote, the important thing that we want to convey is that it didn't take someone filing a formal complaint to look at this. We got the video and it was immediately assigned to the Office of Professional Standards and Accountability, which is Akron's version of the Internal Affairs. 
I don't know if he was on duty or off duty. I don't know why he brandished a gun. People are going to make their own speculation. Those idiots make bikers look bad. Anyway, let's go overseas, shall we? Two arrested during CAB raid on base used by a biker gang. There it is. But of course, this is over there in Dublin. Uh, the Criminal Assets Bureau has seized 10 motorcycles, cars, and cash following a raid on a property in South Dublin used as a base of a biker gang. The gang, which calls itself, quote, the Chosen Few, formed part of the escort during the funeral of David Brine, the Dublin gangster shot dead at the Regency Hotel as part of the ongoing Hutch Kinnanen feud. A little different over there. <laughs> Two men have been arrested on suspicion of money laundering offenses following the Guard A searches. Uh, the search operation led by the Criminal Assets Bureau was focused on a heavily fortified compound in Crumlin. As well as seizing the 10 motorbikes, Guard A removed a BMW car, Ford Ranger Jeep, and Volkswagen plus uh, 4000 in cash, and that's Euro. Uh, they were assisted by the Emergency Response Unit, Air Support Unit, Arm Support Unit, and Customs Dog Unit. Wow. Previous seizures uh, included 125,000 euro and uh, 7,000 euro. Rock and roll. That from overseas in Europe, man. You guys go crazy over there. Uh, but anyway, we're going to take a, a commercial break here on YouTube and Facebook for all those over on the podcast platforms. Yeah, baby, it's Motley Crue. It all from Hollywood and Chinatown Evening Show. Join us Monday through Friday, 7 p.m. Central Standard Time on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and YouTube for some fun times and very interesting entertainment. See you there, boys. Get your most unbiased and trusted biker news now at harleyliberty.com founded in 2012 insane throttle biker news has been the place that all bikers come for what's happening in the scene go over now and bookmark harleyliberty.com rock on oh man last night's live show on the segment with hollywood and china Dow. we actually got china Dow high on the air yes we did Made her smoke out of my corn cob pipe, man, because I love a corn cob pipe, especially when it gets broken in and seasoned. Oh my god, it just gives a freaking 420 some good taste right there. But boy, did I have to carry that one show. It was about 420, of course. That's why we got her high. But you know, you know how some people get high and they're like, chill and don't talk. But I was trying it out. So here I am having to cover the damn show because she's sitting over there lost in space. You know, she's not a big 420 user, so I can't get against her. I did give her some blue dreams. Some blue dreams. Yes, I did. Uh, hey, by the way, you guys got any seeds out there? I need some seeds, man. Grow some good stuff. Anyway, uh, I, you know what? That was allegedly. Okay? Allegedly. Don't get pissed off. Okay? Don't get all PC on me. <laughs> But anyway, it was a good freaking uh, show, man. You guys got to go check out Hollywood and China Dow. We're actually going to be alive again tomorrow, uh, October 22nd at 7 p.m. Central Standard Time. For those who haven't uh, come over there, you have to. It's a whole different show than what uh, we're doing here. It's also available on Spotify and all that good stuff as well. Again, I'm a radio guy. I love the radio, and uh, everything's going good over there. And you don't get a lot of freaking uh, censorship over there like you do here. <clears throat> anyway, but do you guys see my argument now? And that's, you know, I could go on and on and on about the differences between a motorcycle club and a street gang. And I hate when they conflate the two, the media and law enforcement. It ain't right. I wish law enforcement would be straight with the people and say, hey, yeah, we might have caught three of these one percenters or three of these club members, but it wasn't the whole club that did it. Now, am I saying that clubs weren't doing a lot of bad stuff back in the day? No, I'm not saying that. I'm not retarded. But they evolved with the times. They changed with the times. They seen that wasn't the way to go. 
So why is law enforcement still hanging that freaking sign around their neck? They're not domestic terrorists like the DOJ claims. Come on. They have to be the most patriotic people that you've ever met. Club members and bikers. They're the most patriotic out there. So how are you going to compare them to say, let's see, you got domestic terrorists down in Georgia, Arizona, all with their training camps, but you don't say nothing about them. And I don't know the last time a biker went and uh, did something to the Oklahoma City building or stuff like that. No. Club members and bikers are right there. They love this country. And for you guys to designate them a freaking domestic terror, uh, terrorist organization, that sucks. It ain't right. And you should correct yourselves. If there's bad apples, call them out. Just like I call your people out on the wall of shame. If there's bad apples, call them out. Say, hey, these are the individuals. It don't matter if they were wearing a club's colors. But it was just them on their own personal deal that did this. It wasn't a criminal conspiracy. I just like, I wish they'd be honest for a change. Because there is a big difference between clubs and street gangs. A huge difference. What do you guys think? What other arguments am I missing? I really wish I'd, you know what, because I did a cop uh, debate once. He lost pretty bad, too. <laughs> he just got stumped. Uh, I wish I'd have a law enforcement officer that can come on this show and prove to me proof to the audience that clubs are gangs show me the evidence sad state of affairs if you ask me sad state of affairs uh, but I am happy with the one judge and I'm really never happy with a judge it's he made the right choice in this one cause the driver that killed the seven was a Ukrainian national. Meaning, he was already over here on a visa. And if they let him loose without doing any time for what he did, he'd flee right back to Ukraine. And we already know how Ukraine works. God forbid we heard that all last friggin' year, man. All last year. And I'd be talking about that in uh, the next segment after we play some uh, Metallica over on uh, Spotify and all that. Yes, there's another segment of the show that I don't show on YouTube and Facebook, so you got to listen to it on the radio to get it. But I think it was the right choice, and it was pretty freaking cool of the judge. He can see through the argument of these damn uh, public pretenders. They're only putting that much effort in the case because it has the limelight on it and all that stuff. Because I guarantee you that you wouldn't get that kind of effort from a public pretender on any other case. Never. You want to see what public pretenders do, you should go over to the Hollywood and China Dow show when we talk about the death penalty, all that kind of stuff over there. So... Let me know what you guys think. Uh, if you're going to stay with me, get on over to iTunes and all that kind of stuff. We're going to go into our next segment after Metallica plays some beats, baby. I got to love some Metallica, man. You got to bang that head, man. Get out there, pump some. Uh, for those that aren't going over there, thanks for all the donations over on the Cash App. Uh, dollar Sign Motorcycle Madhouse, all the Super Chats, really appreciate it. You guys over on YouTube and uh, Facebook, you take care, and we'll be right back after some Metallica.